All right, 206. Um, today is September 21st, and um, it's our first day online only for this week and next week. Um, so I made this short video about automation, which is actually what today's and this week's subject is. Um, I am going to be talking about this in class today in about an hour and a half, but this is basically a review. And of course, you know, the real challenge we have is that you can't work on this while I lecture during the class, which is a huge, um, you know, kind of loss in terms of your like learning it because it's so good to for me to explain something and for you to do it. But we don't have the luxury of doing that. So the way I'm doing this is I explain it in our in our class and then you need to go back into the lab with this video and watch this again, basically. All right. So the idea is you get, um, you know, a reinforcement of the material, but then you also get to try this in logic. So I can't recommend enough that when you do this, when you watch this video again to do the daily 10, for instance, that you actually sit down at a computer to do this so that you can uh, make sure you understand what I'm doing and do it while I'm doing it. Okay. So automation is probably one of my most favorite things that we do with audio and pro audio in a digital audio workstation. Um, I constantly will talk about how with my students, how automation is the key to making things really interesting and beautiful in your soundscapes and in your music. So um, automation is the programming of parameters to change their values automatically over time in Logic Pro or any DAW, because every DAW has automation using vector lines and envelopes. Track automation allows you to draw lines to automate the values of any parameter. The most common automation parameters are panning and volume, okay? So if I'm trying to, um, you know, it's, it's rare that you would, you know, most commonly set volumes for a track in your project and then literally never need to change them again throughout the entire song or soundtrack, sound, soundscape, right? Imagine a situation where you have a vocalist and in the chorus you want the vocals to be louder than maybe in the verse or vice versa. You want the electric guitar to be really loud in the, in the bridge of a song so that because it, it's the most important thing but then you want the electric guitar to back off in the ver verses when the vocals are supposed to matter more. So automation allows you to make these changes in real time and set values that can change dynamically while your project is playing, okay? And again, this also gets to one of the most important terms that we talk about with, with pro audio and this type of thing is called modulation, okay? And the term modulation in music means basically a, f a parameter of some kind changing dynamically over the course of time as something is being played or performed, okay? So a good example of this, modulation, if I wanted to modulate the volume, that means the volume is changing over time in my piece. If I want to modulate the pan, that means the panning is, is evolving and changing over the course of a track or a minute or whatever the time frame is. If I wanted to uh, modulate the um, the EQ, I could do that. Okay, so it's important to remember that mod automation is a means to creating modulation, and modulation is really the key to making things dynamic and making things evolving in your piece. Right, it brings life to your project because you move away from static elements and you, you enter the domain of dynamically evolving sa samples and synthesizers over time, for instance, or evolving panning over time, which is really, really powerful. Um, and I'm gonna show you lots of examples of how this works, but I'm just gonna, this video is an introductory how to do automation in Logic, okay? So um, let's go over to Logic, because I have a little synthesizer that I've created and a little, um, a little chord progression and let me just play through this one.
Okay, and so this is on a loop, so it would just play forever because I have the looper turned on right here, as you can see. Um, and I have these eight measures are looping, okay? So right now, you know, this, this sound is actually modulating some already by itself within Alchemy. So Alchemy is the synthesizer. I chose just a random preset um, that had some rhythmic elements and was kind of interesting. And at, when I play this, you can see some of the modulation moving. So for instance, look, watch the cutoff and the res here. I think they're gonna modulate, but if not, I can find where the modulation is because you can see it in motion. So let me hit play again. So notice in cutoff, you're gonna see this little kind of dot flipping back and forth, okay? And let me zoom in so you can actually see that a little better when this is playing. Okay, so that little dot is creating modulation. It's creating a fluctuation and actually in the frequency band um, of, the, of this sample. So we get that wow, wow kind of sound as the frequencies open up and then they get kind of pinched off a little bit through cutoff, okay? So, but let's talk about how we would do simple automation like volume and panning. So there are two ways of doing this. Um, well, two ways of accessing automation. First of all, you can just hit the A key, all right? A is going to turn on automation or turn it off. And as I strike the A key, this little box right up here that you can see is, is the A key. It says show and hide automation. And if any of you have done any sort of video editing, any sort of anything in After Effects or in Premiere, you know that automation is used there too, right? To create dynamic changes over time. So um, if I also just toggle this key, it's going to turn on automation, okay? And you'll notice when I turn on automation, I get these, um, these parameters pop up on my channel strip, okay? That were not there before. And these are the controls for your automation. Right now, what's showing is volume automation and this is the, the automation mode. And right now it's in read mode, which literally means all it does is it reads the values of automation, okay? Um, a couple other things. We can also have different types of automation. Most commonly is what's called track automation, but you can also have regional automation, which is about these specific, the automation of this specific green box, okay? Um, I use track automation almost exclusively in Logic um, regional I use way more in Ableton, but it's the same exact thing. The only difference is that regional automation works within this green box only, and excluding the green box, there is no parameter control, okay? So you can see the green line ends here. If I go to track automation, you'll see the, the yellow line continues out, right? So if I click on this, what you can see has happened here is that there's a node now added, okay? And there's always a node added at the beginning to set an initial value. But if I want to add more nodes to change this volume over time, I can just start clicking on this line and it will add more nodes, okay? And now I can actually take this a node, for instance, and pull it down. So obviously what this is going to do now is my track, when it plays, the volume is gonna go from zero dB where it is on the center line it's going to dip down to negative 5 dB and it's going to go back up to 0 dB over the course of this time, okay? And what you're going to see is the volume controller right over here is going to slide down and slide up. So let's play this. Okay, so you saw that event happen and that was just a very simple program automation of volume, okay? So... One thing really important to realize about automation is that I can actually automate any parameter that is controllable inside Logic. So this becomes an incredibly powerful tool, and I'll talk about that some more in a minute. But it's not just volume and panning. Um, I can go into Alchemy, and you can see all of the possible things that I can change in Alchemy. Now, this is incredibly daunting because there's just literally hundreds of parameters because Alchemy has so many buttons and knobs. But there's a much easier way that I can change this that I'll talk about um, probably on Wednesday when we do um, another lesson on automation, okay? So, but anyway, so I can change anything. Again, the most common ones are volume and panning, 
Okay. So if I want to, um, for instance, change my panning, all I have to do is click where it says volume here, okay? And I have to go to the menu and find panning. Now, most commonly it's gonna be in main. I'm gonna to go to pan and then I'm just gonna choose absolute, okay? So panning is a slightly different setting. And as you can see, if I click on panning here, it's a, it's a green line and it starts in the center, right? because the panning is set right now to the center line. And you'll notice if I turn this up and down, you'll see my automation line move up and down, right? And it's basically saying, oh, you want to adjust the initial value to a certain setting, and that's going to be where it goes, all right? So if I wanted, again, to do some panning, some sweeping pans, I could add more nodes on here, and then literally just write this panning. Okay, so I'm going to change this value. So if I go up, for instance, all the way to the top, that's going to go left up a, a certain amount, right? Um, this is almost a full pan to the left. That would be a full pan to the left. I'm going to go to 50. And then a full pan to the right would be all the way to the bottom. I'm going to go to 50 here or to, the, yeah. And so now this is going to sweep back and forth. In, in a pan, in the pan, right? So remember the panning knob is right here and the panning knob is right here for this track, but I'm going to watch this panning knob specifically as this automates. So I'll hit play. You can see how panning now is, is kind of dynamic, right? It's, it's in motion and the sound is kind of evolving and changing and it's shifting through the stereo field, which can be really cool. Um, so that is a great example of using panning automation. Now, a couple other tools that I can use. If I hit the T, to, to, uh, T key, I can pull up the tool palette again, right? And if I go down here, for instance, to automation curve, I can actually use vector lines to change my automation, which can be really useful in certain um, settings with certain effects. If you're trying to achieve certain things, these vector lines are actually way more effective than a straight line, and I might use that, okay? I can also do things like this, where I can go down to the automation selecting tool. I can select a bunch of nodes, Command C, Command V, paste them in, okay? So I can also paste automation into another channel, for instance, if I wanted to copy the automation to another channel, that's how I would do it, okay? Um, so let's talk about one more type of automation, and that's using something dynamically. So let's use automation on a plugin. So I'm gonna install an EQ on here, right? And I do that just by double clicking or clicking once on the EQ. It pulls up an EQ. And I'm going to create a, um, a panning using what's called a low pass filter, right? And what that's going to do is it's going to make my um, sound get kind of squashed and muffled. And then it's going to open up. So this is exactly what we heard in the Britney Spears song the other day, right? First, I'm going to set an initial value. So I'm going to pull this maybe down to 500. I'll have to hear. Yeah, that's a good area where I want this to open up at. And then I'm gonna slowly sweep this up, okay? Now I know that my initial value is actually going to be this number right here. So what I wanna do is this, this hertz needs to increase, right? For me to open up my frequency on my um, automation. And this is such a powerful tool. I'm gonna to talk about this some more in class today, but using this type of automation is really cool. So let's talk about how I access that. So like I said, I could actually go into here, go to channel EQ, and then find it in here, okay? Now, um, again, like I don't, I'd have to really look here. I don't even know. I'd have to pick the right node and find the right setting, and this is really a pain, okay? So I'm gonna do something different, actually. I'm gonna do, a tool that makes automation so easy and honestly way more fun to do. On the read setting, so right now automation is set to read only. I'm gonna turn this to touch, okay? 
and touch is going to allow me to actually write automation in real time while this is playing. So I'm going to go back to my EQ, my EQ, I pull it up. Okay. Now, because this setting is set to touch, as I move this frequency band here, down here, it's going to automatically write data onto my track. Okay. So watch this as I do this in real time. Now, I don't have to hit record. I don't have to hit anything except play. Because touch is turned on, it's going to automatically start writing data, okay, as I move this knob. So I tend to do this often to find a knob. That's the thing is, right, if, if I have touch turned on, if I touch this, I just hit this button right here, which is the 500. It instantly switched to high cut frequency right here, right? So Logic instantly found the high, found the high cut frequency, the, the parameter I'm looking for, because I have touch turned on. And it set a value of 500, okay? So watch what happens now when I hit play and I drag this up like this, okay? I'm gonna do this in real time. So spacebar again is my play head, play key, right? So I'm gonna hit play. Okay, so you heard what happened too. Like when I got to the end, the value actually went back to where it was and it jumped way down like this. So what I tend to do actually is this. I often use touch to find values, but then I would rather have a straight line here. So what I can do now is like, I'm just gonna close this. Now that I have the values, kind of what I'm looking for, I'll go to the automation selecting tool and delete most of these nodes, delete, okay? And now I can actually go in here and grab a node. And if I slide it over, it'll clear out those other nodes. And I can actually make a more, you know, a, uni a more unifying line, right? Now you don't have to do this. It's totally up to you. But you can hear, hear here, actually, when I use a curve, how much the curve really makes a difference in this to make it dramatic. Another thing, if I want to delete a node, all I have to do is double click on it and the node will automatically delete. So just keep that in mind as you, if you're trying to delete a node, that's how you do it. Um, it's a pretty simple process. So let's hear this now with, a, with a, this sweep here. I'm gonna do one other thing too. I'm gonna add a reverb because this will make it sound a little more dramatic, I think. Um, let's hear how this sounds. So, and that big click you just heard is because the automation reset as it went back to the beginning, right? So there was almost like a popping sound as the automation reset. Um, anyways, really important when I'm done with this is that I go in here and turn touch off, okay? I go back to read um, because if I leave this on touch, if I start turning any knobs while this is playing, it's going to start writing data, okay? So I have to be really careful about that. If this is left on touch, then I can easily start writing data when I didn't really plan to do it. It's just because it was playing and I started turning things, it's going to go. So watch what I mean. If I grab, for instance, volume, oh, now I've got new volume data. If I add pan, it's going to write, overwrite the panning data, okay? So, and then it, even more than that, I can do things like this, like toggle off the channel EQ. Okay, so some parameters in, um, just so you know, obviously some values of automation are either on or off, right? There is no middle ground. If I turn off my channel EQ, you can see that this bypass button comes on and then the, literally the choice is either all on or all off because it's either yes or no, right? There's no middle, there's no halfway on, okay? So this is why it really matters that to be careful about your chan about touch being left on. When you're done writing your data, switch it back to read, okay? Um, but anyways, this can be just really interesting. There are just so many ways to modulate your sound. 
um, to change and change parameters over time in your mixes that makes them very effective and very beautiful. Um, and this will really come into play in our next major homework assignment. So, uh, you know, we're, believe it or not, we're coming up kind of, I guess not really, we're kind of far off, but our next major homework assignment is going to be your Halloween soundscapes that we'll be doing towards the middle. We'll start doing them about the middle of October. Um, we have one more subject coming up in this class called uh, granular synthesis. And then we do our Halloween soundscapes. And, you know, this is key to creating drama and creating an interesting mix when we do these soundscapes. Um, and it's also obviously incredibly common in music. So we'll, we'll, we'll see that and hear that everywhere. Um, but this is automation. And this becomes one of those things, too, that I'll just harp on all the time. Like, well, you know, it'd be really nice if you had something in motion here, right? This track, your track in general is very static and boring, and it could use some automation to make it dynamic and in motion, right? More organic, like, like it's changing over time. So um, anyway, so that's automation, and I will see you in class actually in about 30 minutes. And... Um, I will have this posted by then. So talk to you soon. Bye.